everybody. It's once again Friday night, six o'clock, which means it's Wicked Awesome Travel Tales live right here <laughs> in my house. <laughs> but we have a really great show tonight. We have a special guest, Amy Flores Young. Um, she is from T Tiggerific Travel in Lowell, Massachusetts, lovely Lowell. And she is a Disney specialist, if you couldn't tell by the Tiggerific name. Um, but really, her superpower is helping families who have kids with special needs go on vacation, which is not easy. It might sound like it would be a simple task, but it's not. So it's really a great thing because, of course, everyone deserves to go on vacation. But before Absolutely. we start, I'd like to say hello to my fabulous co-host, Amy kaufman Brylahan, And uh, she's from Time Together Travel. And hey, Amy, what's going on? Hey, Janine, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, good. Amy, thank you so much for joining us no tonight. Problem. I can't believe that it's another Friday night. And look at this glorious weather. I had to be back outside today. So life is good in my neighborhood. And I want to cheers as we got to kick this party off now. So cheers, cheers to everyone and our friends and Amy, certainly for the magic that she brings to family. So thank you very much. I can't wait to hear your story. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have ice in my wine. I know. I know it's yeah, my dad, but it's fun. <laughs> I can't help it. So I but before we really get down to like the storytelling and talking about what you do and your passion, we've all been we've seen that, that Disney is supposed to open in July. Is that true? Or give us the give us the facts. Okay, give you the, the DL. Um it is a lot of people are posting, especially the blog type sites who aren't really agents just so you know the people who write all those top 10 lists and whatever aren't typically agents so um yes the disney website corporate website is allowing us to book rooms starting july but there is a huge just dis disclaimer banner across the top that says <laughs> as the story unfolds we may or may not be bumping these out you know blah 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 it's there's a whole thing on it so yes yeah, I have a book, but it does not guarantee that the parks and everything will be open as we know it or as we would want it. So that's why you need an agent who's going to get all yeah. of those details and, and know, um, be able to read between the lines of all those announcements. So because you are a Disney expert, give us the, tell us the 411, really. What do you think? What do you My, think? Open? You don't know. We don't I, know. We don't know, but realistically so universal is planning on opening they've got some big like opening soon plans they've opened universal city walk already and the disney mm -hmm. springs area was opened this week as well with mask requirements requirements you know if someone sees you without a mask they're going to ask you to put one on but the sheriff isn't going to drag you off the property and walk you without one. But, you know, similar to, you know, I think we're all here in Massachusetts, so similar to those orders that we have, that if you're out in public, six feet distancing, wear a mask, um, limited capacity in stores and restaurants, all right. of those things are going to hold true for Florida as well. So even when things, now that things are starting to open, more of the retail sites, and it's the retail sites that are not Disney-owned, it's the retail sites that are oh, uh, they're renting space, maybe like Planet Hollywood or the Under Armour store, or does that make sense? Like those kinds right. of places yeah. are right. opening their doors. Um, so it is. It's a good trial. It's a good run to see who's showing up and how things are going to go. But um, I honestly, if you have a summer trip, unless you go to Disney like us, like me, all the time. If you have kind of a once in a lifetime big family trip or you only go every few years, I'm telling, you know, I'm turning clients away saying you should wait. It's not worth the investment in the money because all your pictures, you're going to have masks on. You might have, you might not, all of the attractions may or may not be open. They're talking about mm -hmm. doing the evening firework shows and things like that because it crowds everybody okay. in so closely. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's a huge part of the vacation for so many people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you know what, it's like that everywhere. I mean, I I do a lot of Europe and uh, Amy does a lot of a, a lot of stuff, a lot of romance travels, a lot of resorts yeah. and things like that. So um, I think it's the same worldwide, but that's good. That's good information. Thank you for letting us know that. 
But let's get down to the nitty gritty. So I mean, like I said in the introduction, your superpower is working with families because I can imagine if you have a kiddo with special needs, mm -hmm. it can be tough to, to try to figure out where to go, how to go, you know, make mm -hmm. it as seamless as possible and fun. So mm -hmm. what, what led you to, to this calling and uh, to have that part of your business? Um, my kiddo is now 21, she'll be 21 next week, uh, has a severe disability. She has um, cerebral palsy, uh, but severe. She's um, nonverbal in a wheelchair, full, you know, considered full care. But we've been traveling with her since she was an infant. We've traveled all over. So that's where my, regardless, yeah, regardless of all of the travel trainings and actual certifications that I hold, Set, um, my daughter Sarah has been my true teacher because we've been there, done that. So yes, like Disney is a huge piece of what we do. But when you think of disability travel, it's not just those kiddos, you know, with sensory needs or behavioral needs or um, ambul ambulation needs. We I do a lot of work with multi generational people or people who have recently had surgeries and things may have changed. So think of, you know, a special need in any type of accommodation. I've been doing a lot of bookings lately with dietary needs, um, severe yeah. allergies and things like that. Because, and as you guys know, if you do um, Europe, you know, allergies is an American thing. Special yeah. diets is an American thing. It's not, so if you're going mm -hmm. over to Iceland or whatever, you know, you wanna work with somebody who's gonna be able to make sure, you know, and we've, I've heard the stories of, oh, I went to Thailand, yeah, and almost died because no one knew what I was supposed to eat and I had a huge reaction and, you know, so um, being able to provide a lot of that information, it's not just, you know, um, I want to say, you know, not just those make a wish type um, images that you see in your head. There's a, you know, one in five people in the United States are considered um, to have a special need, which I hate that term, but you know, or a disability. Um, so, Oh no, it's just, I, it's what we use. It's because it's what society understands, but don't we all have special needs? Yes, we do. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah, I should have asked. I'm so like. No, you're fine. Everybody, I mean, all the professionals in the field use it. It's just, it's one of those like little, like, well, isn't that everybody a little special in these? It's, a, it's a label that's not defining. Exactly. It's not defining. Right. So, um, so yeah, in a lot of people that I, I work with, um, hear about me and call me because they don't even, they don't even put like travel on their vision board. Yeah. Well, they don't even think it's possible. Well, I'm in a is it, and there were no accessible, it, no accessible rooms on the cruise. So I can't go. They don't know. Oh, room. I see. You can okay. Modify, you can modify and get you the equipment that you need there. You don't have to bring it all with you. They just think it's too overwhelming. Um, oh. One of my favorite sayings for being, in this twilight zone of disability life. You know, you don't really know how it all goes or how it exists until you're in it. So it's kind of like a twilight zone type of a thing is it takes extraordinary effort every day to have an ordinary moment. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. That, wow. I've heard it from someone else, but that's my favorite kind of, what does it mean for you to be able to travel and do things? And people look at that, it takes extraordinary effort. Yeah. In every day they, they think of travel and they go, Oh, I can't even, how would we even do that? Well, right. that's why you call me and we work through that and let and right. how to do it. Yeah. Where, where was the first place you brought your daughter? Besides Disney? Yeah. I was it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. We started Disney when she was really young mm -hmm. and that's how Disney became home. I was always a Disney fan, but I wasn't a Disney freak until my kids came <laughs> and got my husband on board and all that fun stuff. Um, we tried a lot of other places. We tried other cruise lines that weren't Disney. Um, and I have like three that I recommend for people with disabilities and the other ones, nope, um, you know, nope, we don't go there. We, we tried a lot of other places and different trips and kept going back to Disney. And everyone says like, why do you go to Disney so much? Do you want to see other things? And it's because Disney is where, I, and I say this, in a general sense, the wheelchair doesn't matter. And I say that because it's where, yeah, the wheelchair matters and we have to make accommodations and we're not, you know, blind to that. But it's one of the only places where we go where we feel like a typical family. Having a child with a significant disability 
and a severely typical child. <laughs> yeah. um, on, you know, my son was always off doing his thing. And usually dad went and did that. And I was off with Sarah doing her thing and being really, you know, her caregiver. So the only time we really come together as a full family unit was on vacation. So what travel has meant for us and done for us, like I can't put that into words. It's it's beyond therapeutic. And that's what I, you know, why that's my passion of helping people with disabilities travel because I can't imagine where we would be as a family unit without those experiences. So tell me if you would, Aim, tell me about what the experience is like, especially at Disney. And the second part of that question is, is it Disney across all their properties? Is it all pretty much consistent? I want to explain that one. So, um, and Sarah's favorite trip was actually Italy. So it's, again, it's not like we just do the U.S., but yeah, we've tried a lot of things. And when I give a tip, I always say like, hashtag ask me how, ask me how I know it's because We've gotten stuck. We've been there. We've done that. Wow, that's awesome. Like our flight from Paris to Ireland, we were supposed to go Paris to Boston and come home, but we missed our, because we were going Italy to Paris to Boston. And Italy to Paris was great, but we didn't make the Paris connection to Boston because they don't gate check um, mobility accessories the same way we do in the U.S. So we actually had to go down, like it came off the plane and whatever, and then it went to some holding unit on the other side of the of international terminal. We had to go get whatever. So we missed it, and there was no other flight leaving Paris for three days. Wow. So we decided to book a brand new flight from Paris to Ireland. We arrived in Ireland at midnight, and our flight from Ireland to Boston left at 9 a.m. So my kids say, well, I have a pass. I had my passport stamped. I've been to Ireland. And all they saw was like one Hilton. Right. right. Well, yeah. And we took a nap and we left. It's like poor oh. Hilton. So now they really want to go to Ireland because they feel yeah. like they need to go there. Got to um, do it. Yeah, definitely. So like I said, we've been there, done that a lot. But for all the Disney properties, um, there's Orlando and Disneyland in California. So those are the two U.S. properties. Um that our that are owned and run by Disney. Um, the other properties are more like franchise trade lease agreements with Disney. Really? A, so like the what the one in Hawaii is oh, like no, the one in Hawaii, all the domestic ones are Disney. Oh okay. And the Wani is an, is a resort, not an amusement park. That's what people right. know. It is a, think, you know, all inclusive, gorgeous, relaxing resort. It's amazing. Um, Disney Euro or Euro Disney? Disneyland Paris is now what it's called. It's been that for all oh, it is. Years. Yep. Um, I don't follow Disney at all. So. Yeah, exactly. so Disneyland Paris, we went there. That was one of the reasons we had our Paris connection anyway. Yeah, yeah. we did a whole trip in Europe and we got home and I was like, oh, what was your favorite thing? And the kids were like, Disneyland. I'm like, all right, you just went Italy, <laughs> all over and you wanted to go back to Disney. Yeah. yeah. Favorite thing was Disneyland Paris. Um, it's the same thing. They're Disney. They're they're not booked through Disney corporate. Um, especially the Asian markets have a lot more government control and contracts. Oh, yeah. Things that are all in play there. Those international things are all in play. So um, we, I work with people who know those parks. I know the parks, but I I then go to an um, I'm more of the middleman going to another vendor. Um, so you get those tickets for you here in the U.S. Somebody yeah. who knows more about it and the, and the As legality of it all. Yeah, we can't book directly. Like, I go in right now and I can get you a room in California, but I can't right. go in and get you a room in Hong Kong. I have to wow. go through the Hong Kong market to do that. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's oh, yeah, that's the easiest what way about, to do it. What about the cruise line? Cruise line is here is U.S. It's considered U.S. That's there. Are they all pretty accessible yeah. for everybody? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, so what yeah. are the three that you recommend? You can say it. You can the say cruise, it. the cruise lines. I recommend the cruise lines. I recommend the most, and it all depends on price point and age of kids and all of that. Um, but if you have school age children or younger, Disney one hundred percent. If you're a Disney nut, then Disney one hundred percent. No matter how old your kids are. Um, my second, like, largest recommendation is Royal Caribbean. 
the Royal Caribbean ships, especially the new ones, are amazing. If you have teenagers, they're huge cities. They're just great big cities. And if you have teenagers, like that hard to please kind of, I don't want to sit on the pool all day. I just don't want to watch. But like they have so many activities for that teenage, young adult, early 20s kind of a thing. Um, I love them. Love them. And if you're looking for more, um, yeah, price point. Um, economical. Economical, like celebrity, maybe. Um, so those are good. So you recommend those. So that so if you're not just thinking about kids, but what if you, so that would work well too if you had Gran or Gramps, yeah, who had some had needed some extra help too. Or cruises are fantastic for multi generational because there's something for everybody. You know, but I'm not going to book a grandfather retirement with the parents and grandkids on Carnival Cruise Line. Mm -hmm. When my son graduates college, he's going on Carnival. Like, yeah, right. yeah, perfect. For uh, oh, perfect. It's a big, <laughs> right. it's a party 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's a party yeah. all the time. Yeah. Norwegian has some great ships too. And that makes a difference too. Some of the ships are a little bit smaller, a little bit older, might not have the type of um, productions and evening entertainment that you're looking for. Some will have casinos, some won't. Like, so if that's a thing, you know, you just have to look at what you're, what you want in your package. Yeah, right. but, the, but the bottom line, they so those companies do a good job. If you contact them and say we have yeah. some things we cruise need, line, they'll work line with you. Great. Cruise lines are really, and again, because you're all contained in one space, so in a lot of people, um, it's pet peeve too. They don't. You can book an accessible room. Whether there's, you don't need any proof of disability to book an accessible room anywhere, right? Like HIPAA, they can't ask you that. So right. a lot of times, because they're slightly bigger rooms, they sell out really quick. But so people go, oh, no accessible rooms. We have to look at the next ship. And not necessarily, depending on your mobility issue or what you need, there are scooters that you can rent that'll be on the ship for you. And then they're left on the ship. You know, you're not moving equipment. You're not doing anything that fit that 22 inch doorway. You know what I mean? So if you're more of a grandma who just, her hip's not great. She doesn't want to walk around all day. You don't need that big, you know, shopping cart scooter thing that the traditional rental companies rent. There are specialty, you can rent commodes, bath chairs, shower chairs, you know, so a lot of people like us with equipment think, I don't want to ship all that down. How am I going to get all that there? It's all like rentable and deliverable to and from the ship. So, or the hotel room with wherever you are. There are companies yeah. all over the United States that I work with. That's amazing. That's really nice. To get all that awesome. out there. What would be your, Amy, top three tips right now for someone traveling with, uh, I don't want to use special needs again. Fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah. um, what are your like the top besides, I mean, I know number one would be call a specialized travel advisor <laughs> such as yourself for right. sure. And I would refer mm -hmm. everyone to you because that's certainly not my specialty. Mm -hmm. So obviously that's tip number one, but what are the next three? So if we're talking specifically more domestic travel, like Disney, California, like Chicago, it was like, I call them like hot spots, hot, hot cities. Um, yeah. The biggest tips are just because it says on a website, um, accessible, quote unquote, or ADA, a lot of things are ADA, but not really user friendly accessible. Mm -hmm. A lot of restaurants, a lot of places that say, well, we meet all the codes. We meet where we're accessible, but I can't mm -hmm. open the door and get her in the bathroom, you know, like at the same time or little, right. you know, little things like that. So it's, if there are certain things you really want to go to tourist attractions, um, museums, whatever, a lot of those places of course are public and are going to be accessible, but are they enjoyable accessible? So it's important to call uh. am I entering the front door or am I going to the loading dock? And it's amazing how many places, especially older museums and things like that, still have that type of accessibility. So it's important right. to call. And it doesn't mean it's going to ruin your trip. You just have that expectation so it doesn't ruin your trip. Right. You have to be prepared so for it. Oh, I've got to go in the back again. Or, you know, like you just, you you know what you're going into. Um, just embrace it. To be Yep. Yeah, embrace it. And that's how it's going to be. Yep. Yeah, that's a huge tip. Um, a big tip is also... Uh, packing, um, less is more. Mm. 
most that's people, like that for anybody though yeah, right. <laughs> but especially if you need to bring it's what because sometimes we need to bring um enteral which is food some like food tube supplies um and don't be afraid to say i can't bring that because it's not tsa requirements or whatever i we always pack a separate medical carry-on bag mm-hmm. like all it's always in the carry-on her meds her liquids all that stuff um, so it's always with us no matter what. So that's the thing is find out like what you definitely can't lose a night or two of and bring that on a carry on. People sometimes forget that and they'll just pack all the med supplies in the big suitcase and then check it. And then it doesn't uh, come in time and they don't have food for the night if it's a tube fed person or they don't have the, if it's, you know, a couple sensory kids, they don't have that favorite blanket that they need in order to settle down or, you know, just things like little tips. It's just really things like that. It's just being, yeah. be excited about the trip, go in with your, your expectations that you know what you're getting. Um, and just, it's those little things, just plan ahead. Don't get too excited and too overwhelmed by it. Yeah. I, I have a specific question because I, I was just thinking about your flight from <laughs> Paris. So I think about all the times where you don't, and maybe there is a way to know this and I've just never paid attention to it, that you don't actually go to a gateway, that you have to walk down the stairs and take a bus or something like that. Is there a way to know that if someone had to know? Um, that happened That happened to us. And again, that's a lot, how do I say that, more popular? That's more popular in Europe than it is here, like walking down and actually going on the tarmac to get on the little, you know, country to country plane. Um, so yes, when that happens, we have to walk. They, I mean, they know we're coming, <laughs> especially luckily with Sarah, they see her coming and they go, oh crap. And they send somebody over like that's They're very good. They're all very good. But yeah, you can't, you need to really, when they say for an international flight, get there two or three hours early, you really need to be there with a, if you have a disability, like four hours early to make sure the stairs aren't right there. The, you got to go to the other side, get on the elevator, then go down, then come back. Right. Right. Yeah. But they do, and um, and as, as much as um, internationally, the cities don't have the accessibility. Mm. You know, they're using Boston's old, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Europe, yeah they don't have the, right. like the, but I will say their airports, their train stations, that's super accessible. I've been impressed with the kind of like the big bus that's up, up on wheels and will put the ramp to the door level and then drive us to the next thing. Like, you know, they have a lot of like cool, cool trucks and things to move people around. Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the buildings that's are awesome. so old yeah. that it, I imagine it's difficult. And I don't think that the laws are the same either. We don't have any. There's not. Yeah. yeah. So we went to, we used to travel to Canada often. Um, and yeah, there were two steps to get into the supermarket. It's just, they don't have. Yeah. I'll put a piece of plywood down to help you get in but there's two steps to get into the supermarket. Right. Oh, yeah. So um, we have a friend of ours. Her name is Joan Qualls. You know who I'm talking about, Janine? So she's out on the West Coast, and she sent me a message. She's watching our show tonight. Hey, Joan. Said, I'm curious. Hi, Joni. Mm-hmm. I'm curious about the three other cruises she recommends. I have a profoundly autistic grandson. We are thinking of RCCL, Royal Caribbean. And you said Royal Caribbean was a good one. Yes. Like that's, is, would that be your... Other than Disney, obviously, yeah. would that be your next yeah. very far? I, I yeah. again, depending on the group and the dynamic, it's like Disney and Royal Caribbean. And for a lot of my recommendations, Royal Caribbean is above Disney because okay. Disney, right, good. It's, it's Disney. Yeah, yeah. If uh, you're not let- Disney, then don't go. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Disney's wicked expensive. Um, <laughs> we talk about Disney is that we pay for what we don't get. There's no casino. The smoking is very minimal. The deck has more room for her chair. So we paid for Disney because there's no casino. You've all, I don't know if you've been on some of those other cruise ships where the casino. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the whole fourth floor and fifth floor smell like smoke. Right. Like, That's true. None, true. Yeah, that hasn't been my experience anymore. Um, I yeah. was on, I've been, in, Tim and I have been cruising a lot the last couple of years. There's only one place to smoke and it's on the back of the ship. Okay. On Princess and Celebrity. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Norwegian. <laughs> um, ah. 
a and lot of, that makes a big well, difference. And we've got well, we some great chips, but Sarah has, and I have respiratory issues. So right. the, well, nobody wants to smell that. Yeah. When the casino back ends to the accessible entrance to the theater. Yeah. That's a problem. I, we, every night we went into the theater, we were having that because yeah. that's the accessible entrance, not the front entrance of the theater that everybody else went in. So see, right. like, things like right. that. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I can tell you princess and celebrity, you can only smoke and it's this big, it's this yep. little one little deck and it's way off and aft in the back. Yep, that's why I like, and, I like yeah, and, it's, and there's a bar and a place to stand and smoke. <laughs> Nobody goes there. Yeah. I'm like a princess fan. She does princess yeah. all the time. I can't get her to try anything new. So <laughs> yeah. I love princess. Yeah. Although I get shamed a lot because I'm having fun on princess, but <laughs> I get it. Yeah, my mom. A whole too. other travel story. I will tell you one day when we have more time, because it is a great travel story about my husband and I. So, uh, well, awesome. so, so um, on that note, on Amy's going crazy on Princess Cruises. Um, thank you so, so much for coming on, Amy. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you, or if they if they need help putting a trip yeah. together? How can they find you? The easiest thing to do, and I know people go, "Oh, I got to turn on my computer or use my phone." Send an email. It's the easiest way. I'm on yeah. email all day long. And it's super easy. It's Amy, A-M-Y, at TIG, T-I-G-G, travels, T-R-A-V-E-L-S, dot com. Amy at TIG travels dot com. All right. And I'll put that in the uh, comments, too, so people can find you. Yeah. Good. Do you have any, um, do you have any social sites? I do. I have a Facebook group that's on there. Like, if you go into Facebook and do Tigerific Travels, we all pop up. But yeah, to get a direct question answered and all that, the easiest thing is just email. Yep. Yeah, good. Okay. Well, Amy, I want to thank you personally very, very much for all you do for all those families out there and bringing joy in the wonderful world of travel to all those who believe they can't. And there's always a way to do it. So I really want to applaud your efforts. So thank you very, very much. Thank and you. what an appropriate weekend. Yeah, I know it does, doesn't it? And what an appropriate weekend. I believe that Memorial Day is just not only for our military heroes, but I also believe it's for our current heroes, which now, Amy, you are one of mine. And, it, you know, all the frontline workers, uh, everyone in the, in, in the medicine field trying to take care of us and keeping them safe. And uh, some are not doing well, and it's a very stressful situation. So I want to say hats off. Cheers. Sure. And thank you very much, everyone who's serving, who has served, mm -hmm. and all the families who are serving as well because they have a member. So thank you all very, very much for everything. And AIM, especially to you, thank you for all you do. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody. Be safe out there.